All right. So we are recording here. So good evening, everybody. My name is Tris Price. Um, I'm left, left, left and welcoming all of you here for this awesome event that we have planned for this evening. Um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. You all are in for a treat. Um, as I mentioned, my name is Chris Price. I'm the host of the Wealth Mindset and Real Estate Investing Virtual Meetup. Um, I'm also the CEO and co-founder of Red Fox Multifamily. And, and tonight, we have a wonderful guest speaker, a friend of mine, Mr. Giovanni Evangelista. Um, and he's going to talk about the basics of analyzing multifamily properties. But before I hand it over to Giovanni, I want to um, want to do a little bit of a of a commercial break here. So, uh, so with respect to the wealth mindset and real estate investing meetup here, um, this is a meetup that's open to all who are interested in growing generational wealth through passive real estate investing and increasing their financial intelligence. This meetup is for the busy professional and retirees across various industries. The individuals in the group make a good living and have a dis and have discretionary income to invest in real estate for its proven wealth building power, but don't have the time, skill set, or network to do it at speed and at scale. This meetup focuses on helping us all grow our wealth mindset by leverage by learning how to build and preserve wealth while developing and maintaining an abundance mindset. This meetup will focus on multifamily real estate investing, as well as other proven ways to build wealth through real estate, through passive investments. And the, this meetup is sponsored by Red Fox Multifamily. Red Fox Multifamily helps pharmaceutical and life science industry professionals diversify their portfolios, add passive income, and get all of the other perks of real estate investing without having to do any of the work themselves. Red Fox Multifamily partners with passive investors to buy commercial multifamily real estate based on vetted opportunities we get access to from our trusted network of top operators in the best markets throughout the country. Partnering with, with us makes investing in real estate completely hands-off and allowing investors to add passive income, build equity, and save on taxes, all while being in an investment vehicle that's backed by a hard asset. So that's a, a little bit about um, us tonight. Now let's just go through a little bit of the, the logistics here. Um, please mute your lines when you're not speaking. Um, it will just to make sure that we limit uh, our background noise. Um, as it relates to um, the presentation, if you'd like, please hold your, or if you can hold your uh, questions to the end of the presentation, unless of course, Giovanni invites you to ask your question during the presentation, um, you know it would be great to to allow the presenter to get to get through. But sometimes I understand I'm one of those people as well. I, I, you know I have a question I want to ask it in the moment um, while it's fresh and make sure I can get a, a response to that. So that is definitely what I want to make sure that uh, you have the opportunity to do. Also, if in, in fact there is a burning question that's out there, um, this presentation is being recorded. Um, this material does not constitute an offer or a solicitation to purchase securities. This is for information only and should not be construed as business, financial, or legal advice. And uh, a few, a couple more things here. So in terms of connecting with me, if you'd like to connect with me, you can scan this QR code and, and uh, it will give you all of my contact information. But I'd love to talk to people about real estate investing. Um, it's, it's such a powerful vehicle and I think uh, everyone should should learn about it and know about it. And so if you're interested in connecting with me, please go ahead and scan the QR code or if you prefer, you can reach out to me via email. It's Chris at Red Fox Multifamily, which you can see on the screen here. And of course you'll you'll receive my contact information when we go when I send out the recording to everyone that is watching this live or who will be uh, watching it on our YouTube channel um, um, at uh, you know, on demand essentially. So in terms of our agenda for tonight, I'm going to introduce our speaker, um, and then our speaker is going to get into um, his presentation, um, and then we'll have a little bit of Q&A and virtual networking um, towards the end. So without further ado, let me introduce tonight's speaker. 
and I apologize but for the resolution of, of the of the banner here. Uh, there was some some distortion on my side with the with the image, but um, I'll do my best. I'll read it out to you guys so you can get it. But before I get into that, just want to let you guys know um, this young man. Um, I had the, the pleasure of meeting uh, maybe over two years ago, almost now, um, uh, in Dallas, Texas, um, at a real estate event. Uh, with his lovely wife, Vanessa, who I know is on uh, today as well. And we had a chance to connect and maybe uh, they, they saw this, this guy wandering around at one of his first um, big real estate conference, all confused. And I see these two beautiful people with these bright smiles, just welcoming me over and, and greeting me and just being so kind and nice. And just, we got to talking and in that conversation, we learned that, hey, we're, we're both we're all from the East Coast. I live in New York, not too far away from where they are in New Jersey. And we started talking about our, our goals and our, our dreams, our ambition. We had a chance to, you know, uh, break bread together, in which they invited me to join them and some other uh, colleagues that they had met the conference for dinner. And, uh, and since then, we've had just such a great um, opportunity to remain connected. And as we are all on this real estate and in investing journey, looking to partner and bring these investment opportunities to um, investors to help them build wealth passively, um, you know, just learning and watching them grow and continue to make an impact has been uh, tre tremendous in, in all aspects of what they do, both in, in the in multifamily and in, I, I know how prolific they are also in single family as well. So you guys are in for a treat this evening. So let me give you a little bit more about Giovanni and I'm so grateful for him uh, tonight for being able to spend time time with us. So Giovanni, um, he has a goal to help people that are tired of working hard and worrying about not having enough money to retire by providing them with multifamily investment opportunities. So he, Giovanni's uh, journey really uh, began to, he embodies this unwavering determination and resilience. Um, after dedicating four years to serving as a tunnel system controller at the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, he cultivated his critical thinking and team leadership abilities. In 2015, Giovanni embarked on a new path as an entrepreneur and investor, harnessing his expertise in HVAC and electrical systems to leave his mark in the realms of residential and multifamily real estate. Today, alongside his lovely wife, Vanessa, who I mentioned before, um, he adeptly manages a real estate portfolio valued at over $1.2 million and is integral and an integral part of a co-GP team overseeing an, a, an asset over 88 units. Um, and Giovanni also is proudly, he probably belongs to the prestigious Brad Sumrock Apartment Investor Mastery Mentorship Program, where he's consistently uh, refining his skills um, and remains a, at the forefront of industry innovation. So without further ado, let me stop sharing my screen and let me, uh, let me allow Giovanni to share his screen so that uh, he can share with all of us this evening um, the, uh, details on the basics of analyzing the multifamily property. So Giovanni, I'll turn it over to you, brother. Okay, perfect. Hold on one second, looking for the for my screen here. Okay. Hold on. Give me one second. No problem. Okay. And people. Where did it go? Okay, I think I got it now. Okay. Let me see. Okay. Perfect. Well, got first it. of all, thank you, Chris, for this kind introduction. I appreciate it, man. I'm very well, we are my wife and I were very fortunate to have you as a friend, you know, and we're very glad that we met you that day two years ago, as you mentioned. I, I'm very excited to be here, though. Thank you for having me all. And uh, before I go to, into the presentation, though, let me tell you a little about 
more about me, about my history. So my family and, and I, we migrated from the Dominican Republic. And like most immigrants, we, we had to start from zero. Uh, my parents, they, they worked their butt off to provide for our family. My father worked two jobs for years. He used to leave home early in the morning, come back in the afternoon to eat, get something to eat, take a nap, and go back to work again to come back home late at night and then do the same thing all over again the next day. You know, he worked even when he was feeling sick. He worked all the overtime he could, even during the holidays. And it didn't matter how much money they were making. It was always just enough to get by. The, there is a day that, that I will never forget. You know, I was in my room and I got up at 4 a.m. to use the bathroom. And when I opened the door of my room, I see my father sitting at the kitchen table, putting his boots on, getting ready to go to work. And his eyes were red from not getting enough sleep. And with a look on his face of frustration, he didn't say a word to me, but, but I could tell he was tired and exhausted of living like this. That broke my heart. And I remember thinking, you know, I wish I could do more to help my parents. I finished high school and my dream was to become a baseball player, right? Like most of the, most of the Dominican kids, but it didn't happen for me. Uh, so I got a job in a warehouse and I was already following uh, the same path as my parents. Uh, I was working hard, I was paying the bills. And a few years later, the, the day finally came for my parents, retirement. And now they're in a fixed income and they couldn't afford to stay here any longer. They had to go back home. You would think that after working hard your entire life, your life would be better, right? Instead, they had to run away and continue to live their life limited. Right before they retire, my life started to change. I started learning about money, personal development, and real estate. And at that moment, that's when I was able to understand. You see, the problem is not that my parents were hard workers, or that, that were immigrants, or that maybe they didn't speak the language. No, the problem is, is that they didn't know how to invest their money to live a better life and create a better retirement for themselves. Instead, they follow the traditional route like most people, work hard, put money in a 401k or some retirement account, and hope they will have enough money when they retire. Today, as, a, as Chris mentioned, uh, I work for the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. My wife, uh, she's a full-time realtor with Kelly Williams. We, we own over 1.2 million in multifamily real estate. Uh, we are part of our GP team um, and ownership of 88 units in, in Georgia. And uh, we are also part of a well-known mentorship program, uh, Brass Sunbrook. And we are founders of Kiskeja Capital, where our goal is to help other people, just like my parents, invest in multifamily so they can create a better life for themselves and have a better, a better retirement. And... So enough of me, okay? So let's uh, learn today uh, the basics of analyzing commercial properties. And also I'm gonna show you what to look for. Okay, let's have some fun. Okay, first of all, all right? So let's start. Okay, so the key terms that, that we must know and understand are this, okay? So the first one is the gross income, also known as the rental income. So basically, is the total amount we are collecting from the property. That's considered the gross income, okay? And the next one is the operational expenses. The money that, that takes for run, to run the property is considered the operational expenses. That includes the water bill, the insurance, the insurance, 
that includes uh, the maintenance, the taxes, all the expenses, except for one, for the mortgage, okay? Now, in multifamily, we don't refer, we don't refer uh, uh, the mortgage, uh, we don't say the mortgage, we said the debt service, okay? So we're gonna, you're gonna hear me more uh, mentioning uh, debt service, okay? So if that is not including the operational expenses because it's not, it's not part of the expenses, okay? So the net operating income, also known as the NOI, is the total of when we subtract expenses from the gross income. So the total that we got left after that, that will be considered the NOI. And let me tell you, the NOI is the, one of the most important uh, terms in multifamily because based on the NOI, uh, that's how the value of the property is determined. It's like any other business. The value of, the, of, of a business is uh, determined by the how much income it produces. Same thing in multifamily. And the cap rate, also known as the, as a, as the capitalization rate, it means a few things, okay? So number one, it means that if we buy a property all cash, the return on our investment, it will be that percentage, that cap rate. Also, it means that the cap rate is an, indi is an indicator for where the property is located. So for example, if the property is located in a bad area with a high crime area, okay, the cap rate is going to be high. That percentage is going to be high. Uh, the risk is going to also going to be high. And the price of the property is going to be low. And it also works in vice versa. Okay, so if the location of the property is a good area, okay, like downtown, great area to live, that cap rate is gonna be low, our risk is gonna be low, and, but the, the, the price of the, of the property is gonna be high, okay? Also, every asset class have their own cap rate. In multifamily, we have three asset class. We have the D class, we have the B class and we have the A class. The D class is the, the oldest one, okay? It's the oldest, uh, the older properties, okay? Any properties built in the 1970s is, is considered a, a C class. Properties built in the 1980s are considered B class. And properties located in the A class, lo, uh, properties locate uh, A class properties, I mean, uh, built in the 2000s are considered A class. All these classes, they have their own cap rate, okay, that the market uses to determine the value of those properties. The next one is the debt service cover ratio, also known as the DSCR. This metric is used by the lender or by the bank, okay? This is how they determine if it, this is a good deal or not, if they want to, you know, if they want to borrow, uh, lend us money to buy this property or not, okay? So uh, the property needs to satisfy that ratio. And I'm gonna talk about that later, okay? And the next one is the cash flow. This is the profit. So after we pay all the expenses, the debt service, all the expenses, what we got left is the cash flow. This is also called the passive income. Some people also call it the, the mailbox money. Okay. Some people call it the bacon or the honey. Okay. So that's that's one of my favorite uh, terms, cash flow, because this is what provides freedom. Okay. You don't have to work for it. It comes every month. That's the beautiful thing of real estate. So what information do we need, okay, to to uh, analyze the pro these properties? So for smaller properties and specific, you will get what is called PNL, okay, profit loss statement. 
as, as you can see on the left side, okay, it, it shows what every unit is paying. Okay, it, it's also showing how much are they making in, in the laundry. And it shows all the expenses, like I mentioned before, the taxes, the water, the electricity, maintenance, insurance, exterminator, all the operational expenses. And at the bottom, it shows the rent. On the right side, you have the rent roll. In the rent roll, it will show um, the square footage of the the square foot of the of the of the of, the, of each unit. You know the the full name of the tenant living in that unit. How much is the the rent? How much are they paying in total rent? For example, here they're they're paying uh, different fees: trash fees, uh, pest control, rent insurance fees. Okay, it shows how much they made in deposit to move in. It shows when the lease started and when it's gonna end. Okay, so this is very important to have because you can start, you know, seeing uh, and making also plans how you're gonna, you know, uh, when they're gonna move out, when the lease is gonna end, when you're gonna renew those leases. So that information is very important, and you're gonna get this information. Uh, from the broker, from the leasing agent selling the property, or you also can get it from the directly from the from the owner. Okay, so it's gonna look more to the more more like the one on the left. You know, it's not very sophisticated, but it's very simple, very basic. Okay, the P and L. So also, uh, if we're looking, if we're looking, you know, at bigger properties. The bigger we go, the more sophisticated it gets, because they use um, now now that those property those properties are managed by property ma professional uh, uh, management companies, and they use the spreadsheets. You know they're on top of the financials, and everything's more detailed, more organized. So if you're looking at bigger property, uh, maybe 20 units and over, uh, you're gonna get also what is called T12. Is short for trailing 12. It shows uh, a statement, right, of the last 12 months. How is the property operating during those 12 months? It shows the income, it shows uh, the expenses, it shows the other income, uh, like trash fees, um, parking fees, pet fees, things of those natures. Okay, it's just so you have an idea what, what it looks like. Okay, I'm not gonna go deep into this because uh, you know the topic is basic. I would like to, I want to keep it basic uh, basic for you guys. And uh, so this is these are the formulas that that we need to learn in order to find each value. Okay, to find the value of the NOI, the cap rate, the DSCR, and the cash on cash uh, and the cash on cash, also known as the COC. All right, you might want to take a picture of this, okay? Because you might have a quiz at the end, <laughs> okay? So take a picture of that. We have some practice to do at the end. So the NOI is equal to gross uh, gross income minus expenses. The cap rate is equal to NOI divided by the asking price. And that 6% that I put there is for you to have a, a point of reference, okay? Especially if it's your first deal, you wanna be in the ballpark of 6%. Why? Because that tells that you have a high probability that you're buying a property in a good area, in a decent area, and a stabilized property, lower risk, and a property that will cash flow. So you wanna be in that ballpark. When, I first, when my wife and I bought our first deal, uh, the cap rate uh, back in 2021, it was 5.9. And the property is well located. It was it's cash flowing, uh, very low maintenance. So you also want to be in that ballpark for your first deal. Uh, the DSCR is equal to NOI divided by the annual debt service. And the minimum that the lender uh, wants to see 
in a deal, you know, so for them to to lend us money to buy the property, they're looking for a 1.2 ratio. Anything below that, they don't want it. So it's got to be minimum 1.2 or above that. The COC is equal to cash flow divided by down pay by the down payment. Okay, and the point of reference that I put there is 10%. The higher that number, the better it is, because that means the money, our down payment, is coming is coming to us faster. Okay, the faster the better. You, we want to recover that down payment. You know, the faster the better. So. When we bought the property, our property, um, excuse me, when we bought the property, uh, our COC, our cash on cash, was about 8% on the first year. But we saw the potential on the property. We saw that we, we were going to be able to improve the property, some, on the, some units, and increase the rents. So in, before, uh, before uh, before one year, uh, we were able to increase the 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 COC by fifteen percent. So that was great. It was a it was a blessing. So now let's uh, let's look at this example. Okay. So let's assume the asking price of this property is one million. And the down payment is twenty five percent. That's the minimum that the lender requires, 25% down to buy this kind of properties. Okay, and let's assume the annual debt service is 40,464 annual. Okay, and, and this is a six unit, six unit times 1500. That's how much the each tenant is paying in rent, 1500, and we multiply that by 12. Why by 12? 12 months, because we always run the numbers annually. Okay, uh, so the, that will be equal to $108,000. That's our gross income. The expenses, all the operational expenses on this property, on this example, is 37800 So if we subtract the expenses, from the from the gross income, the total, the NOI is going to be seventy thousand two hundred minus our debt service forty thousand four hundred four hundred and sixty four. That will give us a total of twenty nine thousand seven hundred and thirty six. That will be our cash flow, our passive income. Okay, so now. Let's put the form the formulas in practice, right? Let's implement those formulas to find the cap rate and the and the DSCR and the cash on cash. So, so NOI we know the NOI is seventy thousand two hundred, and we divide that by the asking price, which is one million, as you can see on the top. That was equal. 7%. Okay, so the so our cap rate is 7%. That's perfect. Okay, it's in the ballpark of six. So that's perfect. So let's find now the DSCR. The DSCR is the NOI divided by the debt service that's equal to 1.7%. That's perfect. Okay, so we are above 1.2. So we are satisfying the lender requirement for them to lend us the money to buy this property. So that's perfect. So now the cash flow, we're, we, we, we're going to find out the COC, the cash on cash, right? How fast is the money coming back to us? What percentage are we getting on this deal? So the cash flow divided by the down payment. That gives us uh, that gives us twelve percent COC, okay? So we are receiving twelve percent every year from our down payment from our investment. So we are above ten percent on this example.
So that's that's a great deal. Okay, I will buy this deal. <laughs> okay, so all right, so let's do some practice now. Okay, get a get get a pen and uh, uh, get a pen and pencil, and let's do let's do this example. Chris, can we wait five minutes? Yeah, of course. We can we can wait five minutes and give people a chance to to run through it. Yeah, perfect, perfect. So we're gonna find the cap rate, the cash flow, the cash on cash, and the DSCR. All right. So you got five minutes. Don't I'll keep worry a timer. If you don't get it. Yeah, don't worry if you don't get it right away. You know, uh, it took me maybe years to get this. You know, and uh, I was a I was a uh, a student. I, I, I might. So don't worry about it. We're going to do it all together. Take your time. All right. I, I like this in giving, giving an assignment so that people can have an opportunity to actually practically go through it. Um, I think, I think that's a good, a good list. Yes. Yes. You know, it's not only about absorbing information. We have to put it in practice, right? Right. That's the only way that we can master it. So we have to practice. I remember me watching videos all night about this. Yeah. You know? <laughs> trying, to master, trying to master it. And that's, a, that's how I was able to learn. That's right. And staring at all of the, the different spreadsheets, the deal analyzers, and trying to, to make sense of it. Yeah. Yeah. Can you believe the first deal that we bought? You know, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't have a mentor. Well, my mentor didn't, didn't know I was, you know, he was my mentor. So, <laughs> I, was, I was watching videos in, in YouTube, you know, and that's how, that's how I learned. And then we went on and, and, bought, and bought a deal, a first deal. And it worked very well. Excellent. How many minutes we got left, Chris? We have three minutes left. Three minutes left. Okay, okay, okay. How is everybody doing? <laughs> I can go back to the screen with the formulas, just in case you didn't take a picture of it. Two minute warning.
We have someone with their hand up. Uh, Bibi, you have your hand up. You're on mute. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I just use my calculator. Yes, I just use my calculator. So the first one is 6%. The second one is 35,550. The third one is 21%. And the fourth one is 1.555. Um, yes, here. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, hold on. Let me write the, uh, your answer one more time, okay? So you said the cap rate is 6%? Yes, the cap rate is 6%. Cash flow? The other one... 35,550. Um, the third one is 21.2%. Okay. Um, and the fourth is 1.54. Okay. Yes, here. Okay. I didn't double check, so I just I just did the rough work. <laughs> <laughs> ringer. She's a she's a ringer. <laughs> no, that's great. She's that's a great. pro. <laughs> yep. <laughs> wow. that's awesome anyone we are at time anyone else uh uh come up come up with uh with some numbers that they want to shout out or if you if you are shy you can post them in into the chat and i can read them out for everyone So feel feel free to to come off of, of mute if you do want to speak out and uh, and share or, or if you got stuck on anything, uh, I think it's a great time to ask. So I I did use a calculator. I didn't do all all mental math like BB uh, has done. Um, I got I got a cap rate of about six point seven two percent, a cash flow of uh, thirty three eight thirty three thousand eight hundred, uh, cash on uh, cash return of about did, did I get that right? Um, of about eight point four five percent and a DS I got the same DSS DSCR of one point five five percent of cash on cash. 8.45 8.45 okay and then i got a one the 1. 1.55 dscr but i did i didn't do the mental math i did a calculator okay perfect perfect everyone else everyone else wants the professor to answer so where, where are you net out all right, so let's do it all together, okay? So the cap rate, we have 7%. Did I get the cap rate? So you guys were very close. Uh, cash flow, yeah, 35, 550. Cash on cash, 9%. And DSCR 1.5. Got it. Everybody's in the ballpark there. Is anybody ready on the shot? Let's see. No. Can't see. No one, no one put anything on the chat, but. I think that was a good exercise. Any questions from from anyone or comments? Yeah, lot, lot, lots of applause. So that's great. Perfect, perfect. So guys, I have a gift uh, for you guys. Uh, I have a a free download, a free content. Uh, you guys can go to my page and download it. It's called Why Should I Be a Passive Investor in Multifamily Properties? It, 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 he explains in details all the benefits of investing in multifamily. You know, after you read it, you have a full you have a full understanding of how this can help you. You know, how can multifamily investing can change your life? You can scan the, the QR code or, or go to the page to the to the website, kidscapital.com, where you can find it. 
Excellent. So Giovanni, before we let you go, um, I, I, I put everyone uh, on the hot seat here. Vanessa, oh, okay, I thought someone had a question. So um, I wanted to to make sure that we we do do a couple things before we we let you go. The first the first thing uh, that I want you to do is take the opportunity to uh, maybe explain um, the, the you know how you chose the name of your company and what what is uh, what is the meaning. That's a great question, Chris. I'm glad you mentioned it. So. Quisqueya Capro uh, is in honor of uh, to the Dominican Republic. You know, uh, I changed the spelling a little bit, but the pronunciation is uh, is the same. Uh, so the Dominican Republic is also uh, known as as Quisqueya, Quisqueya the Beautiful. It's called Quisqueya la Bella. So in honor to to the island, you know, to the, to the motherland, I, I, that's why I chose uh, Quisqueya. Love it. I love it. Well, hey, we do this with every guest that comes on to the to the meetup, and uh, I, you know, we we ask them, we put them in the hot seat for a little bit. And so you you're my friend, but you're no different. And so I'm gonna put you in the hot seat too with some some questions. Um, just and I, and really, uh, they're they're so that you know the folks that are here tonight and the folks that will be watching this on the recording to our membership and you know beyond can get to know you a little bit better. Your the, the story uh, of your of your family, your parents, your your background, which I, I did not know, but the but was so powerful, your journey to where you are today and where you're going, um, most importantly. Uh, and one of the things that I that I like to do is just I think it's so important for people to to have the opportunity to get to know uh, to 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 get to know us beyond just the real estate investing. So what one of the things that I always like to do um, in my family, I we we love to travel. We love to see the world and experience different things. And so one of the questions that I like to ask um, the, 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 the guests that come on to our show here is what is one of the best trips that you have taken and why? Well, we recently went to a, a Corpus retreat, my wife and I, from church. And it was a great experience, you know. It was something more local. Uh, it, we, uh, the retreat was in down uh, south New Jersey, and uh, so we were camping there, and we had a great experience. You know, it was more. It, it wasn't more. It wasn't about the place itself. It was more about the experience and the things that we learned there as a couple, you know, and also as an individual. Uh, you know, we were able to. To learn things that that will help us uh, build a better marriage, you know, uh, build a foundation for our marriage stronger, and you know, it was like it was like removing a a, a blindfold, you know, and after that after that event and, and see 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 things more clearly, you know, and. Uh, Things that we will, you know, see, see things that we were able to see things that were causing, you know, problems in our marriage, and now we're working on that. You know, we're working our, on our marriage and building a, a healthy, you know, more healthy uh, relationship. Can you hear me, Chris? Sorry, I was on mute. So I was I was on mute. But no, I, I think I think that's such a powerful story. And it is um it, it it's uh it's so important. We all can can benefit from investing, you know, as much time as we invest in and all the other things that we do to to try and excel in 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 every other aspect of our lives. We need to make sure that we pause and reflect and invest, you know, that much more into the relationships. With the people that we care about the most, so I, I, I love the fact that you that you mentioned that uh, and that you and you shared that. And these are these are things that are groundbreaking, and you know, will like you said, serve as a great foundation um, for for the journey that you guys are on together. And it's and it's powerful. So thank you for sharing that. And thank you for the vulnerability. Um, the next question that we have uh, is, you know, 
what are you working on these days? I know you're 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 a busy guy. You're you're working on different things. You launched your 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 company. You're taking down deals. You're you know I see I see Vanessa closing deals all the time as well and as a real estate a real estate agent. I mean, you guys don't seem like you sit still. But what are some of the things that you guys are working on today? Yes, yes, Chris. We're definitely staying busy. You know, we're trying to. Uh, so right now I'm focusing on, on, on the business, on Kiskeja Capital. Uh, our main focus right now is to you know, find a, a solid investment opportunity for our, invest, uh, for our investors. You know, like I mentioned before, our goal is to, to, to help others, like other people, like my, like my parents, you know, invest in multifamily and so they can create a better life and, and build a better retirement when the time comes. Excellent. Um, so tell me, you know, what one of the most powerful things that that I learned about in this journey, this personal development journey that that we've been on. And you know, I, I know if I start, you know, talking about this, especially amongst you know, with you and with others, I start to talk about things like uh, start to talk about things like rich dad, poor dad, and you start to talk about you know, learn going down and listening to all the podcasts, all the YouTube videos, and you know, then you're joining these mentorship programs and getting surrounded by other like-minded people, and you start hearing these amazing terms and seeing people that are actually living these amazing things. Things like, for example, financial freedom. And when I learned about financial freedom, that was just such a powerful. It was a powerful thing for me because I hadn't heard of it before. You know, you you mentioned it earlier. I, I the the saying goes is you just have to go to go to school, get a good job, you know, get your company benefits, and and, and then just work and grind, and then hopefully one day you'll be able to, um, you know, everything will come together, and hopefully you'll have a great retirement. Mm -hmm. But um, but then I started hearing about this idea of financial freedom, and I'm like. Oh my goodness! I had no idea about this. And so tell me more, and how do I achieve it as well? So, with all of that background, I, I want to know what does financial freedom mean to you? For me, financial freedom, it will be, you know, going from a life of have to, you know, to want, you know, to want to, you know, instead of having to go to work, you know, want to go to work. You know, want to go wherever I want to go, you know, go wherever I want to go, help the people that I want to, you know, live where I want to, buy the things that I want to. I believe that everybody should should strive to, you know, to, uh, to become financial uh, independent, you know, and have that financial freedom. Excellent. Now, the, the last question that I have for you is uh, one that, that the name of this meetup is named after. And on my journey uh, to you know this, this personal development journey, this real estate investor journey, a lot of it is very much based on mindset. And you know, we people talk about various different aspects of, of mindset, abundance mindset, for example. But one of the things that came to me. Um, as I when I was thinking about what what would I name if I were to start a meetup what would I name it um, wealth mindset um, was something that came to mind for me in terms of you know the origins of this very meetup that I can't believe that we have a thousand members all, all already in just a just a couple of years which is incredible but um, but when you when you think about that and you and you think about what wealth mindset means you know. What what does what would you say that having a wealth mindset means to you? No, oh, that's a, that's a great question, Chris. You know, I'm glad you you, you asked that because I'm, I'm always talking about that, especially with my wife, you know, and my friends. And uh, I believe, you know, having a wealth mindset, it it must be uh, the the most important thing. The first thing that we should have is a wealth mindset you know in order to live a, an extraordinary life in any aspect of our life you know spiritually health relationship business it's like for example when you when you are building a house 
the first, the most important thing, the part that is most important is the foundation, right? That's the first thing the the contractor. So the, that's the first thing that is being is built. That foundation. Without that foundation, the the house won't be uh, uh, reinforced. Uh, it will be affected by everything, right? By by a storm, by the wind, uh, you know, the land, the settlement. It won't be balanced. So for me, wealth mindset is like having that foundation, you know, that strong foundation. Once you have that strong foundation, that mindset, everything comes easier after that. You have a better chance. You have like a hundred percent, ninety percent chance, I would say, you know, to to be successful in every aspect of your life. But first. We need to to build that the that, 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 that mindset first, you know, working ourselves, and then start building on top of that, on top of that mindset. You know, we often make the mistake that that we think that okay, let's um, I want to go into business. Let's create a business. That's easy. Creating a business is easy, you know, uh, and so on and so forth. Let's get marriage, for example. Getting marriage is easy. But if we don't have that, and we forget, we forget to build that mindset first, to work on ourselves before we do that. We jump that that step. Because that's the way we were condi- we were conditioned. We were we were conditioned to to do the action first. Only to do the action, to go to work. Okay, go to school. So you can get a, a good education, and then go to work, and that's it. We were never taught to work on ourselves, to develop the mindset. So that's why that's why it's so important to have that that wealth mindset. So powerful, my man. I, I appreciate that, and and it's beautiful. I could not agree more. Now, just we're we're gonna wrap up here, but one more time, I, I know you have this uh, free gift here for for folks to scan um, their phones or iPads or whatever device and 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 uh, and download the uh, the resource that you have available to everyone, or they can go onto the website and and access it. Um, but one more time for us, if you could provide your contact information, your social media for people who are here tonight that want to uh, connect with you directly that um you know that uh that want to maybe learn more about what it is that you guys are doing and how you're going about doing it um you know feel free to share your contact information and of course um the recording will go out to the membership and everyone will be able to uh, to listen in and get your contact information there as well and of course I'll, I'll send it out to to everyone uh, via email but tell us your contact information your your how people can get in contact perfect so the best way would be you know through kiskejacapital.com so like that we avoid any misspelling or anything like that all the information is at all the way at the bottom uh on the on the website you are able to send me a message we are able to connect you are able to book a call also so we can you know chat talk about real estate about your goals and how can we help you uh that would be the best way uh my email is also there you can also find me on facebook giovanni evangelista uh yeah that would be the best way excellent well giovanni i want to thank you again for taking the time this evening to break down the basics of analyzing a multifamily property um we're going to sign off for right now and then we'll hang we'll hang i'll, I'll ask everyone that wants to ask any follow-up questions um, to to hang on the line. I'm going to stop the recording. We'll have a little time to virtual network. There's also some questions about the the uh, calculation in the chat, which we can run through, and we'll cover that offline. But thank you again, everybody, for, the, for your time. Have a great rest of your night. Please stay back if you want to uh, network a little bit. Have a good night. Thank you.